Okay, so hey you guys, um, still the same evening as, you know, the chicken stir fry Ghanaian style being made. And so me, auntie and uncle have just been sitting here just chopping it up, chopping life, all of that. And then having like really like cool conversations, you know how. You just sit and listen to your elders and all of that. So um, I'm going to the Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum uh, tomorrow. And so, Auntie Uncle and I were just kind of talking about uh, his legacy and whatnot. So, I'm going to allow Uncle Kwesi to take it away with just some more knowledge for you guys. I know how many of you guys are, you know, with uh, learning history, knowing history, and all of that. So, Uncle, back to what we were saying. Well, um, when I look at this country from 1957, when we became independent, one of the things uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah did to help unify the country was to establish secondary schools. And these secondary schools, the students came from everywhere mm -hmm. in the country. And um, what helped was that because we were from different regions and they became friends as teenagers, those teen teenagers have now grown to become adults and but those friendships have kept the country that's my view mm -hmm. because you realize that there were some intermarriages which have carried on and so that sometimes you, you go to a funeral and realize that people know each other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and people are connected and I think it's one of the things that has preserved the stability of this country. Mm -hmm. The fact that people are interconnected in many ways. I have friends I've known for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. And those friendships have continued. Irrespective of their tribe, irrespective of their background. Mm -hmm. And when you go to secondary schools like that, you have the rich mixing with the poor. The brilliant with the not so brilliant. But they carry on. And what I know about Kwame Nkrumah is that he also was a visionary. In terms of the projects he established, think of, talk about the Ghana Atomic Energy. Even in those days, in the 50s, 60s, he was thinking about atomic energy. And he resourced a particular institution to go into that. Talk about Akosombo Dam. Those days, he thought about it. There were even projects for, um, there were projects that he had in mind to make sure that the industry, the, the energy generated by Akusumbu would be made use of. So, it's one of the things I like about Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The interesting thing about him is that he was not looking just at Ghana. Mm -hmm. He was looking at Africa mm -hmm. and how to develop the whole of Africa. And he made a very profound statement that the independence of Ghana would be meaningless unless it's linked to that of the rest of Africa. So you have Ghana being a place where all the people who were liberation fighters came here. Robert Mugabe came here. He actually got his wife, Sally Mugabe. He married a Ghanaian wife. And then you had people like Nyerere. All of them associated with him because of the vision he had for Ghana. And not only for Ghana, but for Africa. And he was part of the people who helped to liberate Mozambique. It was so difficult those days. You couldn't think of the fact that they could become free. But he had that vision that it was possible. And he helped them. He brought them here. He trained them. He educated them. Many of them came to school here. And then they went back to their country. And so if Ghana is, if he was voted as the, uh, the man of the century in Africa, this was one of the reasons that he was bigger. I mean, he fought for a vision that was bigger than he himself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was what people identified with him. The fact that he was not selfish. Mm -hmm. There was some time when Guinea needed money. He sent money. He could have said, it's, um, he could have said that we don't have enough. Mm -hmm. So you think about yourself. We also think about ourselves. But a fellow, uh, country, uh, an African country was in trouble mm -hmm, financially mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he supported them at that time. No wonder when the coup occurred, Guinea offered him a place to stay 
until he died in 1972. Mm -hmm. I, I think. Okay. <laughs> wow. Uncle, um, yeah, he's done sharing you know, his perspective on Kwame Nkrumah's legacy. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, and so that's pretty much it. This is the kind of comment. This is why you guys get so much footage out of me because oftentimes I'm just living in the moment. But anyways, the night is going and um, we the people need rest. And so I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.